good. Thank you so much. That was so kind and unwarranted. Thank you. So I, I actually moved here a couple of years ago. I've been here for about three years, and I moved here for a relationship, like you do at some point in your life. Um, and so, you know, I've been with him since I got here, and uh, it's my first long-term relationship, despite my age and opportunities, first long-term. So I have to ask people if I'm doing it right. And so are there other people who have been in long-term relationships before, like longer than a year? Has that ever happened to anybody? Okay, cool. Um, can I ask you guys a question? Uh, are you supposed to hate the person? <laughs> okay, I will take that as a yes. I will take the assent as a... Well, it's funny, because guys are always like, what are you talking about? She's my angel. And women are like, I cannot stand his ass. <laughs> Help me. Right. So, and the thing is, I don't hate him. Obviously, he's lovely. It's just everything he does. <laughs> every single thing is a new way to piss me off. Like, so, my boyfriend has this cough, right? Uh, yeah, you already know where this is going. <laughs> Just like I see women are like, he has it too. Um, so he has this cough and his cough goes, uh -huh. it's the dumbest cough I've ever heard in my life. Uh -huh. Is that a cough or a sneeze, asshole? Pick one. Uh -huh. It's like his cough has given up on life too. Like I can hear it through walls, okay? He will be in the back garden having a cigarette and I'll just hear, uh -huh. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna be listening to that for the next 30 years until one morning when I'm just choking the last one out of his throat. <laughs> oh, relate, you dick, why don't you? And he's a sweet pea, like he's a nerd, like, like deep space subreddit reading nerd, like nerdy white dude. And that is not an interracial dating combination that you see as often as you should, if you think about it, right? Black woman, nerdy white guy. Cause think about it, it is perfect, right? Traditionally, black women love being able to tell their man what to do. And nerdy white guys love when women talk to them. <laughs> right? So, okay, since I'm surveying you guys, where are the cat people in the room? Cat people, where are my cat people at? All right, cat people, cool. So you guys all know that you're sad masochists, right? It's a thing you've accepted about yourself, that you're in a relationship with a tiny little hairy dominant? They are, they're little, they're little dominants, all of them. Like, think about cats are known for very S&M things, right? Like, they'll mark up all your clothes with their hair so when you go out, everyone knows who owns you, you know, <laughs> right? They, they cut you off from your communications with other people. Like, when you're sending an email, they're like, what is this email? <laughs> you can love no one but me, <laughs> right? They'll control your food intake. You try eating around a cat, they're just like, my chicken cutlet. Like, someone's got to watch your weight, darling. They're just tiny little hairy Christian greys, all of them. And clearly, I'm speaking as someone who has recently acquired a cat. And I use, yes, well, you know, woo, sure. Um, I mean, look, I use the word acquired because has anybody ever bought a cat? You don't, you don't, you don't, you do not buy cats. You just open your door one day and there's a cat there like, Jesus, where have you been? I'm starving, excuse me. Also, I need to take a shit. Where do you keep your shoes? Let's do this, right? And they just move in and then you've got a cat, right? Which is what happened to me because basically unbeknownst to me, my boyfriend was spending our hard earned money buying cat food for all the neighborhood strays. Cause he's a little Care Bear, right? And that's cute, except for I'm the one who wakes up the next morning and goes to the back door and it's like we're running a cat methadone clinic. <laughs> like, all these cats are like, Wah! You're supposed to open at 7.30, Wah! So like, we just kept the cute one and threw kibble at the rest and slammed the door and now we got a cat, you know, it's the way it happened. You know, but the thing is, you don't always choose the relationships that you find yourself in. Like, sometimes they just find you. Like, for instance, I am what is known in the industry as a fag hag. Now, I don't know if that is a phrase that people still use because I'm a decade and a half older than everybody in this room. And millennials keep changing words for things, but until you guys come up with something as funny as fag hag, I'm holding on to fag hag, all right? <laughs> that is how I personally identify. So the thing is, you don't grow up and go like, I'm gonna be a fag hag one day. You're just like a fat lady and they find you, you know? Like, you can, like no, seriously, like, cause I'll get dressed up with my female friends, right? And we're all, you know, dressed up. We're gonna go out, you know, to the bar and like, you know, hook up or whatever. But like, what happens? is when you're a fag hag and you walk into the bar, you get there and you are immediately encountered with a gay man going, fabulous, just like a drive-by fabulous. And, and then like two other guys are like, fierce, 
fierce. They're like moths. They're like, you're fierce. You're fierce. You're fierce. And it's amazing because you're getting all of this positive attention from like interesting men and you're adoring it. But what they don't realize is happening is that they are then forming this phalanx of gay around you <laughs> through which no dick can ever penetrate. <laughs> like you're looking at guys over there and they're just swatting dicks out of the sky like King Kong. They're like, ah, she's ours, stay back. Ah, you know? And like, you're just like, oh, I'm never getting your number. Okay, I guess we will all just hang out together and drink $15 cocktails. And then one of you will make out with me for some confusing reason. And <laughs> then you'll all go home with each other. They'll totally do that. They're like, I'm being so much, uh, uh, <laughs> bye. And then like, you know, they go home and you're on the floor covered in glitter, which is how every Saturday night ends for you. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you guys have been very kind to me. My name is Desiree Burge. Please have a great rest of your night. <laughs> Thank you.